This Week in America with Rick Bratton. Issues that matter to you. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Most parents say that learning is a high priority in their family, but few know they can actually help their children get an extra boost in IQ by as much as 20%. Our guest on today's This Week in America is Dr. Gail Gross. She says parents can boost their children's IQ with one simple and priceless gift, their time. Dr. Gross has a unique perspective with doctorates in psychology and education, as well as hands-on experience as a teacher. She's not talking about dinnertime testing or morning memory drills. Her research has shown that parents can help their elementary school children reduce stress and boost cognitive skills by doing just the opposite, offering free time, non-goal-oriented attention and availability. Dr. Gail Gross, next on This Week in America. Welcome back, everybody. This week in America on the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. Great to have you with us on the program today. A reminder, join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash This Week in America, facebook.com slash This Week in America. Follow us and like us on Facebook. As mentioned on the program today, a pleasure to have for the first time on the program, Dr. Gail Gross, with doctorates in psychology and education, as well as hands-on experience as a teacher. Dr. Gross helps families navigate today's complex problems, by offering a positive and integrative approach to difficult issues. And she's with us on the program. Dr. Gross, great to have you with us on the program. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Rick. Thanks for having me. There are so many things to talk about. We're going to make this a mini-series, sort of an ongoing thing here on the program. I want to talk, first of all, about a study that you were involved in. It's fascinating. It talks about lowering a child's stress and spending quality parent-child time together can actually raise a child's IQ by a significant amount. Let's talk about that because it seems so very basic and something that all of us as parents, actually, we can control and it's not going to cost us anything. Well, you know, there have been many studies. There was one by um, Sandstall and Seltzer years ago that looked at parents and their involvement with children and the effect of that on IQ. And they had dramatic results, as did um, Florence Goodenow and, I mean, just many, many people over the years because we know that when parents are involved with their children from the beginning well bonded with their children their children feel secure when you feel secure and your anxiety is not high you're using your brain in the way it should be used and therefore you get the full potential of your brain your brain really acts like an orchestra so you can access it if you're not anxious and constricted and fearful so by just being with your child being that touchstone for your child in the house, not by buying them more toys or taking them to more activities, but just being with them. You don't even have to play with them. You just have to be where they know you are so that they're secure and not fearful. In the first uh, few years of life, the first three years, where so much of the brain is being developed and the base of learning is being um, absolutely learned, uh, developed, in that period, if you're just there for your child, your, jo- your child can explore, experiment, reach out, extend out in their thinking. And, and by do- doing that, they're reaching their full potential and raising their IQ. So something just so simple as being there with your child will help raise their IQ. And well, and you emphasize, you- yeah, you emphasize just be with your child. So many times we think when you're talking about that, that, okay, we've got to do drilling, we have to do test questions in the morning before school, that type of thing. And you're really talking about what a non-agenda, non-agenda driven conversation, just being with your child. That's right. Like in the olden days, yes. before we had to work and mother could be at home, just by being at home, not by even doing anything, your child has a sense of security. They're bonded to you. You know, your child in the first three years of life doesn't see you even as a separate person. They see you as an appendage. So when you're not around, their anxiety goes up. When their anxiety goes up, they can't focus and concentrate, and they can't think and learn. So by being around your child, they feel grounded and able then to explore and experiment. And then each day, they learn not from the old place, but they learn again each day, each second of every day, from the place in which they completed their learning the day before. So they keep building this associative mass, which is how we process information, all those connections in the brain. But if they're insecure, if they're sent 
to all of these classes and lessons too early, if they're put into nursery situations with no compensation of mom time later or dad time later, then they're in a state of overstimulation or anxiety. And when they're anxious, they can't, just like when you're anxious, they cannot use their brain in the proper way. And if that is a regular situation for them, in, including you know, family trauma and poverty and all of those things which are stressors, then children don't reach their full potential. You're listening to This Week in America. Our guest in the program is Dr. Gail Gross. Her website is drgailgross.com. You're going to log on to our website and log on there uh, directly as well. We'll be talking about some sem- seven simple solutions that you can download during the month of January, some free downloads uh, uh, what doctor some meditation there and, and information okay. that will be beneficial to you and your child. Yes. And you just go to the website, drgailgross.com. It's interesting. So much of, uh, of what you talk about is stress on children. And for many people, they would go, what do they have to be stressed about? I'll tell you about stress, trying to make a mortgage okay. payment this month. Kids have it easy. It's all playtime. It's relaxation time. And you really talk about the impact that stress has on a child very negatively. Well, you know, not to be too complicated, but think of your own life. You're running around making meetings and working and being a dad maybe and a husband maybe and going to uh, committee member meetings and board meetings and whatever you're doing. And the more we fill up our day the more, with chatter and talk and, and all of these, these things that we are filling our day with, we feel stressed, but we can handle that stress. We can come home and take a nap. We have a cup of coffee. We might take a a tranquilizer. But children have no coping skills, and so they're just experiencing stress. And if we know our child and we can recognize these things, we can see that they start having headaches, they start having regressive behavior like wetting their bed, biting their nails, being cranky, just like we get cranky when we're overtired. But what's really happening is that in the brain, the hippocampus where we learn and where memory lives actually narrows, even if we don't have a good night's sleep. Now it can fluff up the next day. But if we have consistent stress, like if a child detaches from their parents too early, if they have to go to nursery too much, and there's no compensation of mom time when they get home, then that anxiety, the consistent anxiety, will narrow that hippocampus. And therefore, they won't ever learn as well. They'll never reach their full potential because it's from that place that they learn. So poverty is a perfect example. Children in poverty that have consistent poverty have a narrow, can have a narrowing in the hippocampus unless we find ways to compensate. And that's what I try to teach. We all have to work, but parents can learn to compensate for time away. When you talk about the greatest de-stressor for our children is that parent-child involvement that we've talked about. That's right. We're everything to our children. Even when they become teenagers, actually, we are everything. We just don't realize it. And children, whether they are itty-bitty or in third grade or fourth grade, they, they need us. There was a, a very famous study by a man named Bayless in England, and he took these impoverished children who were doing poorly in school, and he, he gave them parental involvement. He taught the parents how to be involved with their children, which is just a simple thing of just being there, paying attention, and being with our children. And they not only outperform, they closed the academic gap, but they outperformed the rich kids that were having private tutors and all of the above in the third grade from that one simple thing, parental involvement. So parents are really everything. It's trite to say we're the first teachers, the home is the first schoolhouse, but actually we are the first teachers, the house is the, full, the, the first <laughs> schoolhouse. And the environment we create for our children make us also the true gene therapist. We can enhance genes and we can lower genes by our behavior with our children. You know, it's interesting as you're talking how children, it's the anticipation of that of having a relationship with their parent as well as the participation. But as I'm reading, I'm getting the impression that children look forward to actually interacting with us as much as they actually look forward to the interaction. Yes, but the, really, the real good news is you don't even, in the early ages of childhood, you don't even have to do anything. You only have to be there. There was once a very famous book called Be Here Now, and actually that's 
the truth. <laughs> if you were just there, like a touchstone, your child feels secure. Their anxiety is lower, and they can they can explore. What you want to do is create an environment in the early years that allows them to observe, to explore, to manipulate, handle things. So they don't need $100 toys, a box, a bowl uh, that's plastic, a pot, a spoon, being in the kitchen while you're cooking. But most important, how you talk to your child. Do you know by complicated language you can help raise your child's IQ? Just by speaking to them, you're building this associative mass. But typically, children who are in nursery school or raised by nannies are getting short commands. And these short commands don't help build that associative mass. So you can actually increase your brain matter in a, in a way through complicated language. Something so simple as that. Well, if parents knew that, they definitely would do that. We're always looking for educational aids. We get close to the holidays. We're trying to find things that will stimulate our kids. As, as I'm reading what you're talking about here, and you've got simple seven simple solutions that you can download at uh, the website, drgailgross.com. And one of the first things you talk about, even before you get into those seven, is turn everything off. Exactly. Just be basic, be which basic. is just what you were saying. Get back to that mother of the pre of uh, World War II. Get back to mother that was there. Get back to father that was there. You know, M- Mrs. Clinton said a wonderful thing. She said it took a village. But actually, if you extrapolate that out, it really takes a family. You really need to have a family. That means simply being with your children. All of these um, extraordinary things that we do often just stress our children. And we often do these things for our children because we feel guilty, uh, because we're not there. So we think, well, if we take them to music lessons, if we take them to ballet lessons, if we take them to gymnastics, if we take them to taekwondo and and, um, kickboxing and all of these things, that they we're, we're doing our job but actually what they need is family time what they need is to be listened to and heard and looked at and touched they need to be part of a family and even single parents can do this quite well i call it the empathic process by just focusing on your child when they talk to you you know i gave many lectures to teachers, conferences, and conventions, where I talk about the art of listening. And I tell the story of a little child who put her hands on her mother's face and said, Mommy, listen to me. But she was really saying, look at me. Because we all multitask. We're on the phone, we're listening to a news report, and we're talking to our children simultaneously. They need our attention. They are becoming us. That's the bottom line. They are modeling and social learning from the absolute example we are setting. So you have to be what you want to see. Well, and you talk about the power of making eye contact, that if you make eye contact with a child, suddenly they really feel like you are connected with them. And you're validating and valuing them. If you don't make eye contact, if you don't touch them, then they don't know that you are with them that you're riding that wave of conversation with them, not in opposition to them or not in a discombobulated way, but you're there with them. So many of us don't value ourselves. And because we don't value ourselves, we don't value our children. And it's the simple things are what make a difference, which are the things that build self-esteem, build security lower anxiety, and you send a child to school in kindergarten who has good self-esteem and is well-bonded and has a good sense of themselves uh, and security, and they will do better in school than any child who has uh, $100 toys and all these lessons and classes since they were the age of two, because they're going to process information better. They're going to be able to hold images longer. They're going to be able to use more of their prefrontal cortex because they're not going to be anxious. You know, we've got a few minutes left in the program. Our guest is Dr. Gail Gross. The website is fascinating. A lot of great information for you there at drgailgross.com, including the several simple solutions. We're going to have to do that on part two of our program because the time is going by way too quickly. 
But if someone is listening and they're going, I would really like to do that, but boy, life is so hectic. In fact, you talk about in one of the solutions that we that we seem to have two speeds. We've got fast and stop. Yeah. How can we carve out some time where we actually hit the stop button, and how much time do we need to make an impact on the child? You know, we all are working parents. I was a working parent, and so I understand really the stress of working. But if you're going to work, which actually for mother, for children, is not the most optimal situation because children don't want to be detached. We detach too early from our children. That's for starters. That lowers, that raises their anxiety to start with. But if you have to work, which we do in our culture, then you have to compensate. Children didn't ask to be born. If we bring them in the world, into the world, then we have to compensate. So when we come home, even though we're tired, even though we want to kick off our shoes and sit down on the couch and put on TV, instead we have to cuddle with our children, read with our children, talk to our children, find out about their day. You have to make up, compensate for time away. And only after they go to bed can we really have time down. And we can cook with our children. We can set the table with our children, all the while using complicated language to build that associative mass. Great information at the website, drgailgross.com. Dr. Dr. Gross, thank you for joining us on the program. Appreciate it. Look forward to having you back on the program. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. I loved it. You're welcome. You're listening to This Week in America and the Blue Funk Broadcasting Radio Network. The Hidden Secrets of Money, next on This Week in America.